In the last video, we've looked at how to choose a safe and suitable anchor. And we're now going to look at how to attach onto that, put ourselves in the system to the point where we're ready to then safeguard the client down the steep ground. What I'm going to show you first is a possible solution that I would use in this situation. And then we'll break it down into more detail into its component parts. Okay, so that's me ready to now get my client towards the edge and put them down the steeper ground. So with all of that then, we're now going to look at each of those component parts in more detail. So that being tying onto the anchor and a variety of ways of doing that, and also a variety of ways of putting ourselves into the system. In that last clip, you've seen me use an overhand knot, and that's the most common one that you will use as a mountain leader. I'm going to show you how to tie that on a bite. So double the rope over, take your hand down. At this point, I'm just going to check the tail and make sure that it's a hand span, so that distance. The reason for that, if it's too short, it could work its way back through the knot. If it's too long, it gets in the way. Where my hand is, that's where I want the knot. So I'm going to make a loop, pop the end through, pull it tight. And at this point, I'll just do another check. That the tail's the right length. And now I'm going to dress the knot. So I'm going to cinch it in and pull on each strand individually. We call that dressing the knot. What that then gives me is a loop that could either go around my waist or around a spike and a boulder. I'll now show you how to use that to put around this boulder which I've chosen and I know is solid and safe to use. I'm going to need a bigger loop, so let's take a bit more rope. Uh, that's where I want the knot, I'm just going to check the tail. Make my loop, pop the end through. I'm going to keep the knot loose to begin with as I put it around the boulder. Sit it down nice and low, make sure it's in the right position. This is the direction I want to use it. Now that I'm happy with that, I can now press the knot and that's ready to use. We're going to look at now other ways of tying on to anchors. So far we've been looking at how to attach our rope to an anchor by creating a loop in the rope and placing it over the top. Another type of anchor is a thread and here we've got an example where we've got two boulders coming together and touching each other here and that's where we could also tie tie the rope what we need to make sure is that the boulders are unquestionable so they're big and they're not going to move the preference would be to have a horizontal thread so by that i mean that we've got one boulder sat on top of another and then we could tie the rope around that and what's happening there is that gravity is helping to keep that boulder in place. 
we're now going to have a look at how I'd use the rope to tie around that thread. In order to get my rope around that thread, I've now got to tie an overhand knot, but differently to what we've been doing. And I'm going to tie that knot in a single strand. So I'm going to get a good amount of rope out, so that it's going to go around the boulder. And I'm going to tie my overhand knot in a single strand and pull all of that through. With this end, I'm now going to push it through the thread. Collect it the other side. And then the rope is going to sit round the base of the boulder. At the moment, I haven't got enough rope and this knot needs to move further down. So that's simple to do in that I can roll it down the rope pull some more around my boulder still need to do a bit more okay and now I can re-thread the knot to do that I've got to with this end follow the rope around the knot So I'm going to go into the knot exactly where this side comes in, pull that through, follow it around and then push it through. And again, before I tighten, I'm going to do some checks. So that end needs to be a hand span or more. That's fine. And to check that I've re-threaded the knot right, I'm going to check that two ropes go in, there's two ropes all the way around the knot, and that there's two ropes coming out of the knot. So I'm happy with that. I can now dress the knot by pulling on those four strands. Again, I can seesaw to check that the rope stays in position. And what's even better now is that the rope is sat good and low around that boulder. My preference with this thread would be to do what I've just done, and that's push the rope through and have the rope around the mass of this boulder. Much better than relying on the small contact of rock here. However, if that boulder wasn't suitable, in other words, the rope wasn't going to stay in position, then I might have to use this uh, constriction uh, as to where I'm going to put the rope. Again, I can use the same system of tying my knot first. Don't need as much rope this time, just a smaller amount so that the overhand knot can go here. Again, in a single strand. I can now push that end of rope through. And this is where with threads, it can get a bit awkward. They're tight spaces, they can be dirty. Sometimes you've got to clear um, earth and dirt away to make sure you're getting down to, to the rock and that it is rock touching and not just dirt. Collect my rope. And on this side, I'm going to re-thread that knot again. I'll just give myself a little bit more. There we go, re-threading. So again, going into the knot from this direction, pulling it around, up and through. And before I dress the knot, just doing those checks. So two in, all the way around, two out. Tighten it up. Okay, really important bit now is that the rope often needs moving into position so the pull wants to be here so what i've got to pay careful attention to is that i've moved the rope around the thread and got everything tight okay this is actually moving quite well around this thread but it can get stuck it can get jammed and what you end up with is a pull that's uneven. In other words, one side of it's tight, 
and the other side is loose and that's we don't want that to happen another anchor that i could use is a tree however in the higher mountains it's less likely that we might find one of those i would also need to make sure that it's big enough and as a guide for that i would want the trunk bigger than my waist other things that i would want is that the tree is alive so i can clearly see uh, that it's got leaves and also a root system that is reaching nice and deep into the soil and it's not sitting in shallow soil with the roots exposed once i'm happy with that then then i can tie my rope off around the base of the tree just like i did with a thread around a rock so tying a knot into a single strand of the rope so i'm going to get a good amount of rope out to go around the tree Tie my overhand knot in the single strand. So I'll collect the rope from the other side. And just like on the boulder, I'm going to make sure that the rope is sat nice and low around the base of the tree, and that's to reduce leverage on it. Ideally, what I want now is for that knot to be sat around about here. And that is so that this angle is less than 90 degrees. If I tie my loop too tightly, then we start to get quite a great angle and that will start to pull the knot apart. All I need to do, move the knot down here. Got enough rope. And now I can re-thread. So again, before I tighten up, I'm just going to do the checks that that is definitely long enough. And now I can dress the knot. Once I get back into position, then that is pulling perfectly onto the anchor. In those last examples, I've used the end of the rope to tie onto the anchors. I'm now gonna show you a way where I'm attached into a waist loop. I'm gonna take the rope around the anchor and tie it back to myself. So the first thing we need to do is to tie into a waist loop. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. To it helps to have a measurement here. So I'm going to put the end of the rope next to my knee. Just bring the rope up level with my collarbone and double it over and now take my hand down. Exactly like we've done before, let's do a check on the length of the tail. That looks fine. This is where the knot wants to be. Make my loop, pop the end through and I'm going to keep the knot loose while I now step into it. Bring it up. Now then, what's absolutely key here is that this waist loop is tight around me. I know that the distance here is correct, so any slack I need to take in has to come from this rope. Because I've got the knot loose, I can easily work back round the rope and find the one that I need to pull on to take the slack in. And I can just do it in stages, pulling it in tight and pulling through the slack. I'm getting it really tight, pulling in the slack. Okay, so key things here are that my clothing is cinched in. Also, the waist loop is sat just underneath my ribs and because it is so tight, it looks like I've got a sticky out belly button. So to tighten this loop, this end can stay as it is. That's the right length. So any slack needs to be taken out through this rope here. I'm going to follow the rope around the knot. So this is the side that I want to pull in on.
that's all the slack taken out and I'm going to pinch with my thumb and first finger. Because the knot is still loose, I can then pull the slack through and tighten it. And at this point, I'm going to dress the knot and pull on both ends. This might look ridiculously tight, but it's really important because I don't want this riding up and then squeezing air out of my lungs or if it's too loose it might drop down over my hips. We're now going to look at how I would then put that rope around the boulder. Before I attach into the anchor I've identified where the best position is for me to sit to manage the rope. The most important thing is that everything is in line and by that I mean that my anchor, that me as a B layer, and that where I'm going to send my client are in a straight line, what we call A, B, C. I've also chosen a place where I'm comfortable and I can brace my feet. So here for my left foot, I've got a brace position behind a lump of earth and my right is behind a stable rock. Now I'm going to tie to the anchor, so I'm going to turn round, this is where my bum was and I'm going to shuffle one space forwards towards the anchor. I've also still got the knot around the front. I'm going to flick the rope around my boulder, checking carefully that it is sat nice and low, exactly in the place where I want it. And to tie this off, I'm now going to use the loop and tie two half hitches. I'm now going to tie the two half hitches around my waist loop. I'm going to lean forward towards the anchor, get an arm span. And now I need to tie my half hitch around these two ropes. So two ropes get tied off around two ropes. To make sure that no slack appears in at this point, I'm going to pinch at the base there next to my waist loop, bring the rope round, pop it through, and then roll the half hitch in nice and tight. Same again. Take it round both ropes, through the hole, roll it in nice and tight. And now I'm going to sit down. As I do that, I'm taking real care to make sure that my rope stays in the right position. The knot now moves round to the middle of my back and now I can shuffle forwards into my position so that my feet are braced and it's really tight at the front on my waist. In this situation I've identified an anchor that is much further away. This is where I'm going to sit and then that's the steep ground that I'm going to manage. So if I use that last system of tying in, I probably will not have enough rope by the time I've gone up round the boulder and tied off back to me. So this time we're going to use the end of the rope to tie off around the boulder. This is where I want to sit, so that's where my bum's going to be. I'm going to place my foot at the back of where my bum would sit on the ground. I'm then going to bring my fist in line, pulling nice and tight on that rope. And from there, I'm going to make a loop. Time or not. So my knot is in line with my foot. I can now step into the loop. 
And before I sit down, I want to make sure again that my waist loop is nice and tight. I know this is the right adjustment here, so this is the rope I want to take the slack in with. So I'm just going to loosen the knot again to make that adjustment easier. Identify the rope I want to pull in on. Do this in short sections. Pull in nice and tight. Take in the slack and now I can move not around to my back. And then when I sit into position, I'm really tight on the rope. Here, I don't have the brace positions I can use my feet with. So I am just on flat ground. So it's really important that I'm to absolutely tie it on this anchor because that is what's going to stop me from moving from my position here. With that last method, some people can find it quite difficult to get the exact tension on the rope. So this is another way that can make that easier. I've got the same anchor tied off in the same way. Again, this is where I want to be sitting. So when I collect my rope in, rather than tying my loop from here, I'm now going to take an arm span, drop the spare rope. That's where I want to tie the knot. So from there, I can make my loop. So now step into it. <clears throat> And still using this rope, it's going towards the other end. I'm going to use that to make the adjustments on my loop. The knot is still nice and loose. Identify which rope I want to pull in on. Do it in stages. Again, it's nice and snug. Put the knot towards my back and now sit down in my position. We now have quite a lot of slack rope here. To get the tension right then I'm going to do a bum shuffle backwards. There. And now collect the rope between me and the anchor. Now, I do have to lean into this a little bit, pull everything really tight, and that's where I want the knot. Little bit of a struggle, but it can be done. There we go. And now, as I shuffle forwards again, that puts me really tight on the anchor. I've been saying that the anchor, bee layer and client need to be in line. So we're now going to look at a demonstration that shows why that is so important. What we're going to look at here then is the anchor, the bee layer and the client and how that alignment works. Here we've got the, uh, the big rucksack acting as the bee layer and we can, hopefully you can clearly see that it's not quite in alignment. So I, as the client, line up nicely with the anchor. However, the B layer is off to one side. What that means then is that if I, as the client, slip off and weight this rope, look what it does to the B layer's position. So it pulls the bee layer in line and what that can potentially mean is that they may let go of the rope which wouldn't be great for me as the client. So the best system is to have everything in line. Now 
them we have anchor, B layer and client in line. I now wait the system and they stay in position and so do I. What's also really important is that the rope between the anchor and the B layer is really tight and the rope between the B layer and the client is also tight and therefore we get no shock loading in the system. Now what we're going to have a look at is how I'm going to attach the client onto the rope and manage that system and get them down the steeper ground.